Welcome back. Today's Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I'm going to take a look at one of my favorite scenes from Take Shelter. There are many many awesome scenes in this movie. I'm a massive fan of that movie. But I like this sequence especially because there's so many things in terms of animation that you could take out of it that I think will be helpful. And of course there's something at the end that I love but I'm not going to spoil it and it's an awesome movie you should watch it. But this sequence has many aspects in terms of acting, reacting, use of space, progression of a character. There's just so much in there so let's go and I'll show you. This is a fairly long sequence. I'm gonna scrub through so you can see what's going on. I will have a link in the description if you wanna watch and listen to the whole thing. I'm not gonna post this just because of copyright issues. The gist is that he, again, if you haven't seen the movie, he sees and uh, hears storms, uh, but he's the only one. No one believes in it. And he's taken out the money to build a shelter. She has found out and is obviously upset and rightly so because it takes up the savings for the kids and everything and it's a confrontation of why did you do this what help me let me help you and he decides well you can't help me and so on that is the sequence now why do i like this there are a couple things as you know if you watch my channel you know i'm a massive fan of eye contact and eye line and holding the gaze or not and blinking and you can see that he tries to have eye contact but you can see there's a lot of processing and nervousness there's a lot of blinking so as always think about when do you blink how long do you blink but he's trying to explain kind of well i know you i'm sorry and i did this well i'm worried Kurt. and she look at her contrast she is absolutely confrontational and this goes back into gestures or poses that are off screen so she has her arms crossed and you might argue this might be a potentially a cliche pose in animation, but I mean, it's something you do naturally do as a defense mechanism or protection, whatever it is. So she has that and look at her eyes, full contact here and she doesn't blink. It's just, I'm confronting you, like what's going on? And that, uh, you got your point there. I saw you built this, why? Explain to me, why did you do this? And he can't, he's nervous, he's embarrassed. He doesn't know what to say. He's trying to look at her. He got the little mic expressions and ticks there. But he's like, okay, well, you know, this is what I did, I'm sorry. And he has that moment of looking, but he can't hold. He can't hold that eye contact. He has to look away again. And she realizes, wait, you did what? And now it's again, full contact with her eyes. There's no blinking. And she is really, really upset. So now what you did, what? And it's this, you know, imagine everybody has this personal bubble or you know, the personal space. She goes in that and confronts him and I mean, in a way violates that space, but also in her, I mean, from her point of view, rightly so. Like, what did you do? And you can see that she uses space. So this is something else that I talk about in my class is that you should use space and not have a static character. You go forward, go back, go left and right, because that's what, depending on the acting choice and you know the, the character situation, what you would do. But I love this. I love that she comes up to him and challenges him, like, what did you do? You spent all that money for a stupid tornado shelter. And he can't look, he just can't look at her. It's like, what did you do? Why did you do this? And then once she did that, once she told him what she believes, like, why did you do this? She takes, again, a step back. And now she's in this process, and by the way, I'm <laughs> massively projecting my own interpretations. I could be completely wrong, but I like what I'm seeing and I'm going to use this for future shots. So if, as always, comment, comment if you disagree, you've got other ideas. But anyway, wanted to throw that out there. Let's go back. So now that she's done this, she realized, why did you do this? And he says, I know you don't understand. And this is one of my favorite reactions. So the whole thing is that as they say, I'm paraphrasing, is that acting is reacting. And it's super important that if you are with another actor, or if you're like in your scene and one is talking, make sure that the other character is listening and reacting to the things that, that the character is saying and not in a way of, well, now that person said the line, now I'm gonna say my line or animation wise, you know, okay, now I'm gonna do my gesture, whatever it is. If someone says something outrageous or sad or upsetting, whatever it is, that's gonna go into someone's brain, you're gonna process and you go oh, and have a reaction. I mean, that reaction might be verbal or it might be a body like in here, it, it might trigger a certain physical reaction. It might have something a bit more mental. So whatever it is, but make sure that it feels like a character is listening, processing and reacting. So in her case, you can see how A, she turns her back towards him because she doesn't want to engage anymore. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Then he says this and you can see how before she says anything, shoulders go up. She cringes. She goes, oh, yes, I don't understand. She, she says, you're right, I don't understand. So shakes her head, walks around, 
circles, a complex animation in terms of steps and everything. But now she's just completely lost. Like, what is going on? What did you do? And now, look at this. Bam! After all of this, all the going around and being lost, she stands firm. And the way I see it, she's trying to regain control of the situation. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. You did this. You did this. So now she's counting down. Like, wait, you did this, this, and that? And it's stupid? <laughs> You're stupid. Why? Well, look at this. Stare. No more blinking. Solid. Confrontation. Like, why did you do this? Tell me. And she says it here. Tell me. And now it's awesome. So now again, because she's back in control and she's challenging him, saying, tell me, what did you do? Bam! Step closer. Getting closer into his face. But she's an awesome character and they're both great in the movie and the way they challenge each other, but need each other and love each other. So now she does this and then she goes, please. And it de-escalates. And then you can see, once again, a gesture that's off screen. I love that she holds his shoulders. He is trying to look, right? Actually, he's actually looking without blinking. That's pretty cool. So now she's going into this, like, come on, tell me, let me help you. And it gets softer and softer. And now she's actually embracing, like, come on, I want to help you. And now look at the thumb, right? So you got that little move of more compassion and love, like, let me help you. And then she waits. And he just asks, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. I can't tell you what's going on. I can help you. And then you can see her breakdown going, ah, oh, crap. That's just horrible. He looks down again. He can't hold the gaze. Okay, let me put Anna to bed. Or I think that's her name. It's the daughter. Now, this for the longest time, I because I've watched this sequence so many times, I, I at one point forgot what was going on. I always interpreted this as, well, he opens the door to go to the daughter, to put the daughter to bed. She doesn't want to cry and be upset in a loud fashion, not to upset the, the child, right? I mean, as parents, sometimes you just don't want to do that. And then she has that, if you listen to this, she has this breakdown here. Oh, the breakdown, right? But she's like, oh man, this is so horrible. But the girl is deaf. She, she can't hear anything. So my dad interpretation is obviously massively wrong. But what I like about that thought process is that maybe in your animation, your character has, and by the way, the scene is done. Maybe your character is doing something uh, and it could be a dispute and they don't want to do something in front of the kids. So you could have a gear change as that's a, an assignment. The character could open a door to the children and now your character will act differently. They might have, you know, tears that might go and go, Okay, hi, good night, right? And then you might change, and that might be an interesting change of character, change of behavior and acting that could be interesting to animate. But you can do this in a totally different way. You can have something where someone is nervous and does like a thing of, okay, I can do this, I can do this, and then the moment, this might be with sound or with visuals where someone goes, now welcome, blah, 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 to the stage of blah, 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 they might go, and then they go out, be it a speaker, a comedian, a politician, and then you can go further, this could be, relaxed and confident, or let's go cliche, politician who then is a liar, who then goes mm, and then has that evil look before they go out to then have a more of a smile. Like, oh wait, he was nervous, but he's actually really mean. And now he's pretending to be nice. Like you can have multiple layers of how a, a character reacts and changes depending, like knowing that the character is going to go somewhere else. So be it the door opens to a party, like maybe you're okay. And then the door opens and you can see there's so many people at this party and you just get nervous and awkward around people. And then the, the whole body language changes, right? So I think that that is an interesting aspect of something you can do through a set and as if, if you've watched my stuff you know i'm a massive fan of adding a character uh or putting a character into a set or adding a set to a character but that is that is as a whole i love the the usage of space that she walks around right back and forth in circles but also it's almost visually showing how she's grappling with that information it's, it's so much is going on in her brain that she has to walk around and find herself that she is using that space and then she goes okay hold on, hold on. you did this you did that why did she do this? And then the body can calm down. And then you get also contrast of visuals. So it's quiet, confrontation, craziness, what's going on, walk, walk, walk. So visually, there's a lot of movement and energy. And then, okay, back to, so tell me why. And then you go back into something quiet. Imagine she would be moving around all the time. It's kind of boring, there's low contrast, it's kind of eh. Or she would be constantly still and just looking. My might argue that would be nice and threatening, but after a while that can also get kind of boring, especially if that's on your reel and there's not enough contrast and you know line of action and changes in your poses. That could be potentially a problem. But I like this and I like the back and forth with him where he blinks, doesn't blink, looks away. So again, contrast of the people's confidence and nervousness and how they interact. And the big 
biggest thing to me is her shoulder reaction, meaning that she hears something and goes, oh, like, why would you say that? And it's cool because, and it's something that I think is not done enough, not that you have to do it, but it's usually in animation play to camera and it's cool when someone turns and you just see the back because then it's all body language and pantomime and it, but you can still show reactions and thought process and changes through just the body so and it's cool contrast so why not have a character talk to camera doing off camera right doing to to your other character that might be off screen but then turn and then maybe maybe with you know up shoulders and then they hear something disappointing and they go oh. and you can show this just in that post change but anyway that's it I love this movie. Go watch it if you haven't yet. I would love a like and a subscribe. Why not hit that bell button if you want to get all the notifications? You know the spiel on YouTube. Also, if you watch this till the very end, you're still here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time that you put into watching all of this. Any concerns, questions or whatever, comments are there. And again, the sequence with the full audio and everything in the description. And that's it. And I will see you in my next clip.